So I wanted to talk about AFC, and the first part of that is a presentation to maybe illustrate what's going on, how it works, and then we'll um, go through a demonstration of setting it up and, and uh, using it. And so for this presentation, we're going to just focus on these three areas, the DRAM, SSD drives, and the FC. And the SSD drives, so I've got four SSD drives, and when I create AFC on it, I'm just going to create it as a RAID 0, uh, stripe across um, the AFC, and um, any additional space that's left over on the SSD drives, if I'm on a 322 system, or above, then I can use that additional space for express layout and provision LUNs. I'm not gonna cover express layout, so we're just gonna talk about the AFC part, but I'm still gonna stripe AFC across those disks, okay? And then, of course, I've got 16 FC drives, and those will be provisioned at RAID 6. So there's just two primary things that occur, reads and writes in cache. So if I have a write page that comes into DRAM, um, the next thing that happens to that write page is it's going to get mirrored, uh, data protected in DRAM. And once that data protection is put in place, then I can acknowledge the host. After that, then I can continue to optimize that write page and do other things to it and move that into the FC drives once it's ready. The other part is reads, right? So I could do a read request into, you know, from uh, the host so it's gonna pass through DRAM first. If it's not in DRAM, then it's gonna to go to the FC drives and do a read request of the page from FC, return it to DRAM and acknowledge the host. Well, there's a concept of read cache, right? Which is a separate area. It's not really a separate area. So the cache within a three part system, you can kind of picture it on a slide rule. So data protection always comes first. And the more read cache you use, the less or sorry, the more write cache you use, the less read cache you have. So one benefit by using AFC is it will extend the read cache so that I can use more of my write cache. All right, so we'll cover that here in a second. So what happens now is in this read cache, the system's gonna go out and it's gonna fetch all these read aheads from FC and it's gonna put those into read cache. So the, the hope is that the next read request I made, that read page is already in read cache and I can just acknowledge the host. All right, that's the goal. And if you look at stat, v, or stat cache on the command line, you're gonna see CMPs or cache memory pages, a hit percentage. And you'll know that your read cache is, is actually providing um, those uh, uh, read hits back to the host. And that's a, an optimized way to do it. Okay, so the, the other option obviously is to create some AFC here and so now we're gonna stripe that um, AFC space across the SSD drives. And once that read cache gets to about 90% full, and again, picture slide rule, right? So I got heavy writes, heavy writes in my system, and now I need a little bit of extra read cache. Um, I can start uh, moving some of those pages or destaging some of those read pages from my read cache into AFC. Okay, so that's, that's what happens. All right, so now what's gonna happen is uh, I have a read request that comes into DRAM, and if it's in DRAM, that's great, it can acknowledge the host. Now, if my read request comes in and it's not in DRAM, what, I, what the system can do now is it can go to the AFC cache pool, if you will, and if it's in there, it can acknowledge or, or, or copy that back into DRAM. Now it's in DRAM and acknowledge the host. Okay, so that whole process is a lot faster than going to FC. Okay, so now here's the other option, right? So now I've got a read request that comes into DRAM, it's not in DRAM. It's gonna look in AFC, nope, not there either. So now it's just gonna go to the FC drives and pull it in, and once it's in DRAM, acknowledge the host. So you can see that there's, it's, it's, gonna, it's, it's faster in DRAM, it's still faster than FC going to AFC, but if it's not an AFC, I'm still gonna be able to pull in that read request. Now in the situation where, because we talked about RAID 0 and AFC, so in the situation where AFC is off, shut down, or you know uh, anything happens to, like I lose one of those drives, so now my stripe's broken, it's not gonna impact anything because if the read request isn't in DRAM, I'm gonna revert back to how I did it originally. If it's not in DRAM, I'm gonna go right back to the FC and do that request. I, I, there's not an AFC pool to fetch a read request, it doesn't exist any longer, so I'm just gonna reread it off the FC drives. 
Okay, so let's, uh, let's check that out in the lab. Okay, so now we're in the lab and I've got um, uh, a LUN already exported to this host and I'm currently creating the iometer file. And then it's gonna give me about a 80% uh, read heavy workload. Um, so that's what I'm shooting for anyway. And so let's go ahead and create the AFC and we'll go to adaptive flash cache here. And I'm gonna create it on this host. Nothing's configured right now. Um, I, yeah, I'll show you this. Okay, so uh, we'll edit it. And then mode, you can go in simulation mode if you wanna just try it out. Uh, we're gonna go to standard. Uh, RAID zero, you can also go uh, protection. Uh, it's not really a big deal. So I'll say RAID zero. Um, 64 gigabytes and you can enable it for all volumes where you can specify a volume set if you have just a specific workload you'd like um, to use or be benefited from AFC but I'm just going to say all volumes. I, I typically recommend people to start out with 64 gigabytes anyway unless you know your workload is heavy reads. Um, if, if not then you know if you're not sure 64 per node pair is really a good number to start with. Um, because the percentages are going to change um, dynamically, and it really depends on random reads that are less than 64K. If it's uh, sequential reads, those are not moved into AFC. And if it's larger than 64K, then those are not put into AFC either. So small random workloads. Anyway, all right, so we've created 64 gigabytes, and then um, this should create it and enable it. waiting. There we go. So it's created and enabled. And if you want to, you can go in and disable it if you'd like. Uh, we're just going to leave it alone. Uh, none of it's being used yet. There is kind of a warm-up time. The system's got to learn. Or not really learn, but it has to... I, I look at it as read pressure. So remember that 90%. So we have to pull in uh, over 90% of the read cache uh, full, and then so we can start moving some of that off into AFC. Uh, and that'll also calculate all read aheads and everything else. Um, so right now we're still generating our file. Um, so I'm not gonna have any read requests right now for this lab system. So I really need to wait for this to finish. So um, I will pause it once this starts working, then we'll jump back to uh, check out what's going on. Okay, I went ahead and disabled uh, AFC just so we can kind of look at the differences here. Uh, I'm running a stat cache and you can see that um, uh, CMPs are being hit, but not much. Uh, and the one reason for that is I'm 80% random on my reads in iometer. Um, I did have it enabled, uh, AFC enabled uh, for a few moments, and that's why we got a little bit here in uh, in the queues, and those will eventually uh, destage out into cold and dormant later on. Um, and then I, I've got here's the performance of that LUN right now. Um, through iometer, so we were at like two and a quarter, two and a half, going up to uh, close to three milliseconds of latency on that volume. And now we'll go ahead and um, enable all volumes. That one, yep. Enable it. And we'll start to see uh, it being used. And what we're looking for here is the FMP numbers. And now we can start to see it. it's starting to warm up. You can see it warming up here. And our FMPs, once uh, we start getting in here, uh, these are hits. You can see normal starting to grow as uh, a lot of the read pages are being uh, pushed over out of DRAM into AFC. Um, warms or hit requests. And now here on node zero, we got a, a hit. Now node one has a hit for FMPs. And uh, we'll just give it, a, it's going to take a little while to um, uh, really start to fill out. So I'm going to just pause it right where it's at and then we'll come back in a few minutes. Okay, just to check in, we've got, um, well, I cleaned it up. I just restarted the uh, iometer at um, 16K and 100% reads just to be a little bit more aggressive. That's what it looks like. So 16K transfer requests, 100% reads. And then I cleaned up these. So here's our stat VB. Um, so it's, it's, I've never turned off AFC, I've just let it run. 
and we can see that the uh, stat VB or the back end service times have continued to decrease and um, this is a result of the read pages actually coming from AFC and not from the disk and if we look at stat VLUN uh, kind of tracks the same as the stat VB and stat VLUN would be the front end IOs so we're generating about um, 0.6 is that point? Yeah, about 0.6 milliseconds to the host. And here's our um, IOs. So the IOs on the um, on the VLUN is about 40, about 4,200 IOs. And if we go to uh, AFC, we can see that about 63% of it has been used now. And out of that, about 41% was being hit from from AFC. You notice the CMP ratios are still low, about three, but the FMP hits are in the 40s, which is great. So the read pages are being serviced from AFC into DRAM instead of going out to the out to the spinning drives to get it. And here you can see as it starts to warm up the normal warm and hot cues. And um, so normal is the normal restage page or the page that comes from DRAM into AFC. Warm means it's been hit and hot means it's been hit frequently. So we're getting some uh, good numbers here. And I'm gonna go ahead and shut off AFC because I think that this shows that AFC is working. We're getting good IOs, good service times, and now I just wanna see the difference of disabling AFC and see what happens when it has to go to the drives. Okay, so now AFC is being turned off and it happened immediately. You can see that FMPs are no longer being hit. Our queues have shut down and flushed. And if we go here, look at that. So here's the back end IO for StatVV went from about a half a millisecond to two milliseconds on the back end. On the front end, same thing. We went up to about two and a half to two milliseconds. And then the stat IOs have dropped. So our IOPS have dropped significantly from what it was approaching about 4,200 down to about 1,500. So we can see that over time, it has improved the performance, not only from IO, but also from latency. So we've reduced a lot of our latency as we're able to serve up that uh, those FMPs or AFC cache pages instead of going to the drives. So let's turn it on again. Now this is going to be a slow process again because AFC does take time to warm up as the memory pages are moving from DRAM back into the AFC. So this isn't going to be immediate we'll start to see that the um, StatVV and StatVLAN and IO stats will start um, going back to where they were, but this could take half hour to an hour, and sometimes even longer, depending on uh, read pressure and how much of the AFC is being used. So I hope this gives you a good idea of the practicality of AFC and, and how you might be able to use it in your environment. Thanks a lot.